Axiom Space went back to space on January 18, 2024. This third mission had a crew of astronauts, all of them from the European Union, Michael Lopez Alegria from Spain, Walter Villaday from Italy, Alkai Gay Sarashe from Turkey, and Marcus Wan from Sweden. In their plan, 14 days on board of the International Space Station, or ISS, they conducted more than 30 experiments prepared by institutions from ESA, Italy, and Turkey. Many of these experiments were focused on learning how to live in space. These were important because Axiom Space is paving its way to building the first commercial space station by collaborating with NASA and organizing missions with private companies to fly to the ISS and learn more about living in space and also about the technologies necessary to sustain human growth out of the planet and also with the added benefit that it could bring untold benefits back home. Each of the countries the astronauts represented sent a series of experiments, some of which might sound boring, but are very important to understand about human adaptation to space and how materials behave in microgravity, and even to learn more about them in their usage here on Earth. So let's talk about them so you understand what I mean by this. And if there is a term you don't understand, I recommend for you to look for it in Wikipedia, or you also can ask in the comment section. For example, Italy not only had experiments to study whether specific skills and cognitive abilities of astronauts are affected by space flight, but also about biochemistry and neuroscience, like the one investigating how space radiation affects the neurons of humans, and another to understand how certain proteins like amyloid beta, which is connected to the Alzheimer's disease, aggregates and forms plaques which are related to having Alzheimer's. This study can provide insight of how to prevent this disease or even reverse it here on Earth. In this mission, Italy also brought a project of Talara, an Italian race car engineering and manufacturing company, to test, in this case, radiation shield textiles for future space stations or also for spacecraft and spacesuits. Another Italian company, Spaceware, also tested a spacesuit called SmartFly Suit 2, which was especially designed to monitor astronauts' physiological status and then help them to be healthy while they are in space for future missions. But probably the most surprising study brought by Italy was one that involved the microgravity test for the ready-made pasta made by Barilla, the famous pasta company. They actually had the crew fill journals about their meals experience, and with this looking to develop a broader range of tasty food for future space travelers. Hmm, we will have a lot of pastime space. ESA and Sweden also conducted several studies related to the physiology of humans while they are in space. One test looks to identify neural biomarkers that are related to the sensory motor adaptation to space flight and also to investigate how radiation exposure during a space flight can affect the biological age of or DNA and its repair. After the flight, astronauts will also participate in a study for bone loss density in microgravity and immobilization that they have in space. In this case, to understand uh, what is the time frame or extent of the reversal of these changes once that they return home from space. Other studies developed by ESA included investigating the effects of architectural setting and how they affect the astronauts' performance, their stress levels, and also their stress recovery rate, and how these relate to those observed in isolated and confined environments that they also put here on Earth. While in this mission, ESA also studied complex, complex plasmas because these behave different in space and what they learned from this will affect the future manufacturing of silicon wafers for semiconductors and silicon chips, which are very important for all the electronics we like. The last country participating in the Axiom 3 mission, Turkey, also had studies about humans in space. For example, microgravity associated changes in the gene expression in the human immune system, and also used some related information to identify potential travelers without better suited to large duration missions because the resilience they have in their immune system. But another study that can be considered in the opposite side focused on monitoring the physical demands, the nutritional, nutritional changes, and lack of the sleep while in the space, looking to develop personalized procedures that can optimize the safety and the performance of each astronaut that is sent to space. Turkey also experimented with novel metal alloys that are of interest, interest for potential application in many industries, including space, aviation, automotive, energy, and medicine, or also investigating the microgravity effects of on 
metal particle dynamics in fluids. And the result of this study could help to develop zero carbon energy generation technologies here on Earth, or also for the development of propulsion systems or even energy generation on Mars. Other studies included understanding plants' adaptation to extreme environments. This is how microgravity affects the growth, the movement, and the genetics of plants. The result also could help with the development of more resilient crops here on Earth. Another project generated data from algae to advance the development of microalgae life support system for space missions and also could impact the design of future carbon dioxide capture, the oxygen conversion and wastewater treatment systems and provide fertilizer options for other agricultural crops grown in space. There was one experiment from Turkey that caught my attention, but I, I'm still unsure if it was done. This experiment was interesting because it is a STEM project led by 13, 14 year old students, and the project aimed to investigate the effects of propolis extract, known as B glue, on bacteria in microgravity, and therefore open avenues for future research on new and natural products based cleaning agents that can be used for future space flight applications. Besides these experiments, the Axiom Free crew also conducted outreach events. While they were in a space, they talked to elementary and high school students and other organizations and even political figures from their home countries. So definitely the Axiom Free crew had a full, full schedule while they were in a space. But I have a question for you. If you had the opportunity to send an experiment to a space, what that will be? I will be very interested to know about it. Please share that with me in the comments.